Now I know what you're thinking. What about the lunar samples retrieved by the Russian lunar probes? They turned out to be identical to the Apollo samples. The Russians did bring back uh, they had a sample return mission. The Zon, I think it was Zond Five. It was one of their one of their missions that went to the moon and brought back. It was like a hundred grams. It was a very very small sample because it's it, you know it's hard to bring back a lot. And um, you know chemically and all of that, they were identical to or at least you know close enough to what was found on the moon. This is something else that the propagandists are very open about. However. They are also open on the fact that many Soviet space claims have been proven to be propaganda. For years, it was written that the dog Laika died aboard Sputnik 2 a week after launch when her oxygen ran out. In fact, she died of heat exhaustion five hours after liftoff. The Soviets also covered up the fact that Yuri Gagarin had to eject from his Vostok capsule during re-entry. And Alexei Leonov supposedly had to deflate his spacesuit before he could get back inside Voshkod too. They were also able to cover up the embarrassment of their failed N1 moon rocket and denied its existence for 30 years. Everyone knows you can't trust a proven liar. So why do the propagandists take Mother Russia's word for it? We already know that the Apollo soil samples were distributed to about 50 geologists across the world, including geologists in Russia. As Windley tells us on his website, It's difficult to imagine what influence, if any, the US government could have had over the Soviet Academy of Sciences, whose geologists examined Apollo lunar samples. By the time Luna 16 returned Russia's first soil sample, Apollos 11 and 12 had already allegedly returned nearly 56 kilograms of lunar rock, a few tiny samples of which were made available to the few geologists across the world. Again, including the Ruskies. In response to the arguments that the Apollo samples could have been retrieved by robots, as the Russians did, NASA believers refute this, arguing that Apollo retrieved many, many kilograms of rock, whereas Russia was only able to pick up a few measly grams of soil. Quite true. To get an idea of just how little the Soviet Union was able to collect, a bag of sugar holds more grains than all three Soviet moon samples combined. And the failed Luna 15 wasn't their first attempt to try and retrieve soil without the aid of humans. Twice the Soviets had tried before, and they failed to gather any soil successfully. Let's just speculate for a moment here, shall we? We know that the Apollo moon rocks, brought back by Apollos 11 and 12, were made available to the Soviets. And to America's then 55 kilograms, Luna 16 only picked up about 105 grams. Or did it? Knowing that the USSR did exaggerate about some of their technical capabilities in the space field, and also knowing that they had access to the Apollo samples, how do we know that Russia didn't simply scrape 105 grams off a moon rock from Apollo and then pass it off as something that they collected? If this is what they did, then it is no wonder why the American and Russian samples would be identical. And who would notice? What's 330 grams out of 382 kilos? It is undoubtedly difficult to scoop up lunar rocks with the aid of machines. So, why go through all the trouble when your arch enemies could deliver the material to you on a plate? Am I speculating? Of course I am. And as we all know, speculation is not proof. So, you want proof? Here's my proof! If you remember previously, ESA launched their Smart One probe to crash into the near side of the moon and analyze the soil. 
Whilst watching the news coverage at the time, I noticed something quite unusual. Something that was reported once, and only once. Watch now, and you'll discover why. One space probe crashed into the moon today, but it was intentional. And a Tasmanian observatory is playing a key role, extracting valuable information from the collision. It's almost half a million kilometres from the moon, but this radio telescope is also very close to the action. Three years ago, the European Space Agency launched the Smart One space probe. Today, it was on a collision course for the moon. All the other controlled impacts on the moon have generally been either on the far side of the moon where we couldn't see it or in the polar regions uh, where it wasn't so easy. This is the first time we've had the opportunity to uh, really get a good glimpse of it with all the telescopes that are available. Observatories in Chile and Narrabri in New South Wales also were trained on the probe. But at 26 metres across, the Mount Pleasant Observatory outside Hobart had the most sensitive equipment to help determine what the moon is made of. Finally, collision time. By punching a 10 metre hole in the moon's surface, the probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. The key is the chemical signatures in the dust and debris thrown up by the collision. And also the radiation in the infrared can tell us the temperature, which tells us how much energy was released and what the material must be made of. Today's collision could also unlock the secrets of the moon's origins. So each theory of moon's formation has uh, a prediction for what the moon should be made out of and by looking at what the moon is actually made of we can eliminate some theories and uh, reinforce others. It's hoped results will be available within a year. Michael Lockerbie, ABC News, Hobart. By punching a 10 metre hole in the moon's surface, the probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. The probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. Different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. Different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. And there you have it. As of Smart One's controlled impact, a mismatch has been found between actual moon rocks and the rocks supposedly collected during lunar EVA. The probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. This means that the Soviet samples must also be different, as their chemical structure matched up with the Apollo samples. Or perhaps they didn't. On ESA's website, we are told they found that the calcium detected from orbit was in agreement to that found by Luna 24 on the surface of Mir Chrysium. As Smart One flew on, it swept DCIXS over the nearby lunar highland regions. Calcium showed up here too, which was a surprise until the scientists looked at the data from another Russian moon mission, Luna 20. That lander had also found calcium back in the 1970s. So it seems, the actual moon rocks are different to the Apollo samples, but not the Soviet samples. Evidently, either the Russian moon rocks were never identical to their American counterparts in the first place, or ESA is covering for Mother Russia and forgot to cover for NASA. By punching a 10 metre hole in the moon's surface, the probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. Such a damning discovery that only the Australian Broadcasting Corporation picked up on this, while all other news networks ignored it. Isn't it obvious why? When you control the media, you control the truth. The only other network that reported anything of any significance was this from 10 News. Although Smart One is now in pieces, its voyage will help establish whether humans could eventually survive in such a hostile environment. Gee, I thought that was already established by the Apollo missions. Interestingly, on page 259 of his book, A Traveller's Guide to Mars, written three years before Smart One's impact, William Hartman had this to say about lunar meteorites.
A similar number of meteorites have been proven to come from the moon, an identification that would not have been possible without the rock samples returned earlier by Apollo astronauts. Rock samples that we now know are different to the ones actually on the moon. The probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. Essentially, William Hartman has confirmed my earlier theory that NASA used meteorite samples from one random origin or another, made a few alterations, and then claimed they picked it up from the moon. They made the fatal error by expecting that no one would actually send a probe to the moon to verify the lunar geology.